Combo Breaker. You may have heard of it. Originating in 2014, Combo Breaker has become one of the tentpole events of the FGC calendar, standing out with its unique aesthetic and its come one, come all approach to its game lineup. But what are the challenges that go into putting on an event of this size and ambition? I had a chance to speak with Rick Thyher, event director of Combo Breaker, on the eve of this year's event to talk about just that. Combo Breaker officially began in 2014 when Adam Hart retired the Ultimate Fighting Game Tournament Series, which was the Illinois fighting game tournament of size and stature that we had. Um, it was one of the only ones in the American Midwest at that point and probably the largest that any had been. Uh, when he stepped down, that created a pretty large void in what our regional community was going to have. So I partnered with Gaming Generations and Max Wasserman, better known as Curly W, to set up Combo Breaker 2015. What was really important to me was two things. One, we ran a tournament called Combo Breaker in Minnesota that in many ways was probably terrible, but well liked by a lot of the attendees because we just focused really hard on, you're here to play games, let's play games, let's do some entertaining and dumb stuff around playing games, and then let's try to do as much stuff as humanly possible that's so far over budget that it has to be run exclusively on passion and the fact that we all just really want to do something stupid. That became the driving motto for what Combo Breaker was in 2015. It has stayed the driving motto today. We try to do as much as we can on a budget that doesn't really support what we're trying to do under the strict focus of the fact that we have a bunch of people with some pretty good, pretty varied skill sets that are determined to do the most we can with those. I was really, really into the Warp Tour at the time and a lot of the traveling music festivals, so we tried to ape a little bit of what that was. When we expanded into Pheasant Run Resort in 2016 and kind of did the go big or go home year, that was the driving focal point for us. We wanted a festival concert environment. We wanted that atmosphere, but we wanted it to be directed at and focused in on people playing fighting games. And if we can wrap that with some vendors or some extra activities or all that stuff, that's fun, that's cool. But all we really wanted was atmosphere and people playing video games. While Combo Breaker has grown in the years since its inception, it still manages to keep its unique feel and atmosphere, both in part due to the event's location and mission. It's like Evo. The largest, uh, most widespread convention in competitive fighting games, as a gigantic arena spectacle, it feels like the big show because it is, and I think it always will be. What Combo Breaker has tried to achieve is not chase after that feel and that vibe. And there's other events that are doing that, some of them are doing it well, but that's not necessarily important to me if those types of events already exist. What I want is the equivalent of the big band and the medium-sized club. We need space, we need power, we need stages, we need lights, but we need all of it to kind of work holistically and focus down on, okay, at two in the morning, we want 1,300 people playing a video game and we want 3,000 people playing 20-some different video games and then we want all of them to go play 20 other video games and make that, make that festival environment where when I was at a music show, you watch what's on main stage, and then you go to the side stage, and then you walk over to this other stage that's kind of in between the two, and you hear something that perks up your ear, and you go, all right, I'm gonna check that out. Then it's cool, then you buy the record, then that band gets to grow. We treat that the same way here. It's one of the reasons why uh, behind us this year, we have a New Orleans ballroom on this kind of screwball fake Bourbon Street that is part of the vibe here in that this is not a pristine, glitzy, glam environment. This is a golf resort that definitely hasn't been renovated in quite a while and has that weird charm of there's so much here that's not quite right. But because there's all kinds of stuff wrong here, it kind of loses its focal point. Like if you go to a big glitzy show and it's like, that white wall has a gray stripe on it. What's wrong with this place? And so if we get people to just walk around and play, we can take our very large games, our very popular modern mainstays, and we can surround them with everything else that the genre has to offer. And particularly older titles that are still very well played, Vampire Savior, Super Turbo, uh, modern titles that have a pretty dedicated fan base that doesn't have a lot of places that they choose to gather or feel celebrated, whether it's Skullgirls or at this point Killer Instinct. And we put them all here and we put them right next to all those other games so that no matter what, when you walk stage to stage, when you walk location to location, Super move sound effect, cool. Uh, flashy visual character situation in KI. Oh. Stop, watch, see, discover, play, become. And at the end of the day, all we really want is a bunch of people who came here because they love fighting games, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, to become someone that leaves here curious about, interested in, or fans of more games than they walked in the door caring about.
Combo Breaker is held in St. Charles, Illinois, about 45 minutes away from Chicago proper. Most of the staff is either currently living in or from the Midwest a fact that the event wears proudly on its sleeves. I think the Midwest is incredibly important to Combo Breaker in the sense that the roots of this show are here. There are many key staff that have left the Midwest and live other places now. For the past two years, uh, Curly W and I actually did not live in the Midwest at all. This event was created to give back to the Midwest community that helped me discover fighting games, to give back to a region that produced, in my opinion, some of the best tournament staff in the country. Um, I think. That's also showcased by some of the other events here that have grown in great scale and stride. Frosty Fostings is now one of the five largest events in the country. And that's the sister event to this event. That's supposed to be the little one. All the pieces that help make that possible, all the people, relationships, and history that makes that possible means that the event needs to be here. And at the end of the day, I'm a Midwest boy. You can put me anywhere on the planet, I miss here. And if I'm gonna miss here, there will always be an excuse for me to be here. And Cowboy Breaker's a great one. So Combo Breaker is the size that it is because every year more and more people want it to be either what it was to them or more than what it was to them the prior year. I think one of the only ways that happens is if the investment in everyone that you're working with, from the bracket runner up to my assistant director, has that same sense of ownership. It's hard to have ownership of an event because at the end of the day, somebody's the event organizer or the event director or the tournament organizer. And one of the things we did early on with Combo Breaker is I tried to kill off calling anyone on staff the tournament organizer. There aren't TOs at this event. Colloquially, there's a ton of people called TOs at this event, but I'm not. And part of it is I don't handle the brackets. So we have a competition director in Curly W that handles the brackets. I'm not gonna be equipped to do some of the promotional and development work that I do if I'm also having to dive in and do some of the logistics work with staging and lighting and some of the floor plan treatments. So we work with Mike Hianas and a crew of really, really great lighting and AV techs that he's built up relationships with over the past, God only knows, to put that stage set together and kind of create that treatment. We work with local organizers, some of which that I have strong relationships with, some of which I don't, like Noah Vandercook over at the Ignite Gaming Lounge comes in and helps out. We work with Raina, who has done almost all the TO desk work for Illinois events for years now. We work with Gaming Gen very, very extensively because their network of uh, equipment resources has gotten so vast that it helps us expand and push on what we're doing from setups to staging to merchandise to the whole nine yards on that front. We have the Chinneries who help out with registration every year. And almost all of these people at this point are coming from different states, different locations, different regions, different home bases for the communities that they're part of. Taking all of those Lego blocks and letting everybody get in a circle and build the castle is how we make this event home. And I think with everybody feeling like the event is home, it can grow and it can expand. And since that's important to me and what I would consider the core staff, I need it to be important to the bracket staff because without them, the event doesn't run, period. So in whatever way we can, we need to celebrate them, give back to them, and make sure that this experience is important to them in the same way that it's important to me. Because that way we can all, at the end of the weekend, feel like we created something special together and have that be true. Okay, we're good. On three. One, two, three. Hey! Combo Breaker's future seems bright. But even after years of successful events, what does that future look like? So we ask that question every year, because every year we have the same two answers. We want this to go forever because it is a, now a part of our region. And a, I want to say, even if I don't know if it's fully accurate, a part of the culture of, that we have for fighting games in America and an and awareness level worldwide. Every year we also get done with the event and go, oh, do we want to do that again? And every year it takes up more time, more energy, more emotional investment, more staff that I have to figure out ways to delegate uh, duties to that I'm really bad at delegating to begin with. So that's difficult. And at the end of the year, every year, there's always the chance that the people that we work with that make this event work the way it does right now won't be here next year. So we get done, we kind of look at the chessboard and go, what pieces do we still have left? Whose energy is still high? Who is inspired? Who's not? Can we go for broke again? Because we almost, for better or worse, literally always go for broke every year. This event is sustainable almost exclusively on the support of outside investment at this point, and that my partnership, God bless all of them, 
this is not a primary source of uh, either income or expense for any of us. So if it, if it goes neutral, all we've lost is time and we can't make that back, but as long as it was satisfying to spend, maybe that's okay. The bigger question for us anymore is where does this event go? Does it grow? Does it stay the way it is? Should we shrink it intentionally? What do we want it to do? What do we want it to feel like? And when does that feel break? And I think what I've landed on in the last year is when that feeling breaks, this event is done because it will have lost the point of what it is. Maybe we go start something new, maybe we don't. As long as this event feels like it does to me and the crew when we get finished with it every year, I think we'll always try our damnedest to make it happen the next year. The list of things that could blow that up is innumerable, so we'll find out. But yeah, I don't know. This is kind of home at this point. It's hard to leave home, even if at some point you want a different one. He could have taken this life bar, and now we're paying for it. Boy, got two Thank you for watching our look inside Combo Breaker. We're committed to bringing you high quality documentaries of the fighting community with the support of our patrons, like these guys. If you like what you watch, consider becoming a patron today to help us make more. Till next time.